Well, I am here in Post Falls, Idaho with my good friend Clay, and uh, we are in the middle of an, an incredible event today. Uh, over 5,000 people. Yeah, it's packed. It's packed out 5, there. 5,000 people gathering in a speedway, um, really kind of in between, right on the border of Idaho and Washington, and uh, man, it's just been incredible. It's been incredible. Um to feel the energy, the 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 excitement. Um, I, I just always love coming to, to places like this that are off the beaten path that really, I mean, people are gathering, people are rowdy, people are ready to take a stand and fight and worship. And So anyway, I wanted to talk to you, Clay. You've been hosting these events all across America. Yeah. How did they start? Why did they start? What's your heart behind them? Well, I heard you in your documentary say that when Newsom declared that you can't worship or we shouldn't worship mm -hmm. anymore, yeah. something ignited in you. Right. And I remember talking to our mutual friend, uh, Dr. Zellner, on a phone call. And doctors, I was asking Dr. Zellner, he, he was an optometrist, he's not a medical doctor. And I said, uh, what do you think about, you know, the whole COVID thing? Mm -hmm. And I began doing my own research. And, right. and I don't want to get banned off of YouTube. But what I discovered was that the models that justified the fear were right. wrong. Right. And whether they were intentionally wrong or just at, they were wrong. Right. And that the tests being used were falsely calibrated. So the tests were wrong. The models were wrong. So there shouldn't be any fear. So I'm going into my Bible and I'm reading that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but right. a power and of love and of a sound right. mind. And I just felt like, you know what I need to do? I need to turn my building into a church. So every Thursday, we're just going to have a church service. I'm not a pastor, but I'll bring in pastors, and I'm just not going to comply. I'm not going to yeah. allow my church and my family to be And you down. were in Oklahoma at the in time. In Oklahoma, okay. yeah. yeah. And then I called Dr. Z, and I said, let, let, let's sue the mayor to keep the city open. And I'm going to keep my businesses open. Right. And, I, and so I started doing that. And then I have this podcast called The Thrive Time Show, where I vowed to never talk about religion or politics. So I had sort of this line of, like, I don't talk about religion or politics. And our listeners are all, all leaving comments on iTunes. We were number one on iTunes five times, six times. And people were leaving comments, you know, on interviews. Of, I was doing about Wolfgang Puck and John Maxwell and Damon John saying, why aren't you talking about what's going on? This is affecting business. Why won't you talk right, about it? Right. And this so, was a primarily a business podcast. It's just all business. Right, okay. And so no religion, no politics. And right. I just told my wife, I said, I have to share the truth. So right. That was kind of my thing, and that was right before the lockdown, into the lockdown. So we sued the mayor, turned our building into a church, and started doing town halls. And at one point, we had like almost a 1,000 people at one of our town halls. And I called you, and I said, I need you to come do a worship service at my building. And I remember talking to you, and, and we didn't know each other super well at the time. And, and I remember you and I were kind of talking. It's like, well, is this a church, or what is this? And I'm like, this is my office building that we've turned into a church. And I'm not a pastor, but we have pastors that come in, and I need you. And you and I did that event at the Riverwalk. Right, right. And that was really affirming to see the way right. people responded to worship. Right. yeah. And then it just kept crescendoing and crescendoing right. to where I remember I had a conversation with General Flynn. I said, General Flynn, I couldn't sleep last night, and I feel like God wants us to team up to share the truth with America, to kill the spirit of fear, and to get people back to God. And, you know, I, I didn't know General Flynn super well. I, I'd spoken to him many times. Mm -hmm. And he said, I know. And it has to happen to the church. And that began the Reopen America uh, tour. It was one event, and we had 7.1 million people that streamed it. 5,500 people attended it at Rainbow Bible College. We had over 50,000 people requested tickets. Wow. And I was going... In what month was this? This was in April of 2021. Okay. And from the time that God put it into my mind, I went on One America and Newsmax. I didn't have a team to sell tickets. I just said, if you want to buy tickets to attend the Reawaken America, at the time it was called the Reopen America event, text my phone number. My wife's like, did you just give out your cell phone number to <laughs> 20 million people? And I said, yeah. And the phones were ringing so much. I didn't have anybody. I, just, I said, God, I need a team. I need people to show up. And then God brought into my, our life uh, a Tanya and Gina and a guy named JT. And people were coming out of the woodwork saying, I would love to help. And so all of us were operating off of cell phones. We were just taking tickets. And I felt like God wanted us to name the price, let people name their own price. And my wife, who does accounting, Sean, she's going, because you know what it costs to put on events. Right, yeah. My wife's going, do you understand we're committing to spending hundreds of thousands, and your first thousand tickets are paying like 15 bucks a piece. How's this going to work? And I'm like, I, I don't know, but I think God's wanting me to put my faith, not in my business acumen, but in him. Right. And then one by one, we started having donations and people buying tickets for, wow. you know, and then it just kept happening. And then here we are. Uh, General Flynn called and said, could you do one more? 
in Tampa, and we had 8,500 people show up. And he said, could you do one more? And now this is our, our 15th event here. Wow. And now I consider you to be a friend, and Eric Trump, and Cash Patel, and General Flynn, and Mike Lindell. And it just it's so crazy now, Sean. When, the, 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 when Trump's home was raided at Mar-a-Lago, my wife, we're in my living room. My wife says, I wish I could just pray for Eric. I just want to, God, I want the peace to be upon him. So I was doing an interview with Donna Clement when uh, the Trump... I was, I was interviewing Eric. I was on a show with Donna Clement and Eric at the time of the, of the raid. Now, I didn't know this was happening. And my wife was watching it, and she just felt so bad. And she said, you know, she said, I wish I could pray for him. And as soon as she said that, my phone rang, and I look, and it's Eric Trump calling. And he's like, hey, man, I just want to check in with you, let you know we're okay. And my wife's like, can I pray for you? And it just, I think God's just doing stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, it's not, yeah. you can't call it coincidence. It's right. God is working in a supernatural way. And I think if someone would have asked you 10 years ago, you've been praying for revival forever. You know, you've been praying for, but I don't know maybe if, if you would have seen it happening like this. I never thought I would be doing this, but I just know that it's just awesome to see God's mighty power at work. Yeah. And I'm just honored to, to invite guys like you on the stage. And, and it's, it's just, and so many people here, I talk to them and I ask them, have you ever, did you go to church? I bet you half the people have told me they did, they don't attend church. Yeah. But they're coming to this event in search of the truth, and we know the Bible's yeah. the, the ultimate truth. Well, you know, it's amazing is... You know, I just did this long interview with Tucker Carlson that's going to air here pretty soon. Yep. And one of the things he told me, and he said this on the air, but he said, you know, I, he said, because of the way that the pastors responded yep. and the churches responded, I will never, ever step foot inside a church again in my life. This is what he told me, ever. Well, And he's and like, I, and I, lo I love God, but, you know, and, and, and it was just like, and I, yeah. here you got the number one, cable news show in the history yeah. of TV, he's saying, I'll never do this because we responded. Of course, my whole time I'm trying to yeah. encourage him. <laughs> this is what we're seeing across yeah. America. There are leaders that are standing up. There are people that well, are rising up. I, the one thing I, I, and again, if I encourage everyone listening right now, if you open up your Bible to Matthew 5, 10 through 11, I find a lot of encouragement there, but it says, blessed are ye who are persecuted for righteousness sake, right. for ye shall inherit the kingdom. Also, if you read Luke chapter 9, I mean, Jesus clearly instructed his disciples to go out house to house, town to town, laying hands on the sick, casting out devils. And if anybody rejects you, shake the dust off your sandals and keep right, going. Right. And I think a lot of pastors in America, and I'm not blaming them, just speaking it, and I hate to speak in general terms, but a lot of pastors have, were used to, uh, you get a sabbatical. You, you, you know, you're, you're, you're a pastor, you get six weeks off a year for sabbatical. As an entrepreneur, I've never had sabbatical. I work six days a week. I'm not sure what sabbatical is. Um, but then th th a lot of pastors get sick days. I've never had a sick day. 23 years, never had a sick day. Um, a lot of pastors um, are celebrated by their community. Very little adversity. A lot of pastors are cheered for at weddings and events. Um, and we've had a kind of a peacetime pastor. And I'm not blaming right. him, but it's been a peacetime pastor. Wow. Yeah. And then the 501c3 kind of encourages that self-help message, where right. it's kind of been a self-help message in a peacetime place. Right. And right now what God's doing is he's shifting, he's moving, and he's awakening people like Mike Lindell, like General Flynn. And, right. and, and so you, you talk about you know General Flynn behind the scenes. He and I, most of our conversations consist of the book of Daniel, Matthew, Revelation, Luke, Ezekiel, Isaiah. You would think if you, if, I'm sure the FBI at some point will seize my phone. And when they do, they'll go, man, you talk to this guy all the time about the gospel. That's what our conversations are. And I, don't, and I, I talk to General Flynn at my house in my man cave, and he goes, Clay, you know, 10 years ago, I would have never been reading the Bible like this. But I am pressing in. And so I just think God is shifting right now, and I'm seeing people like you stand up to the, rise up to the occasion. Melody, the praise and worship leaders rising up. Yeah. Pastor Phil Hotson Pillar. Yeah. I just want to celebrate these people. Pa Pastor uh, Phil and Bernadette, uh, you're seeing Pastor Rodney Howard Brown. Right. And God's awakening a different kind of pastor, right. similar to the pastors that founded our country that right. we call the Black Robe Regiment. So I'm not discouraged at all. I'm actually fired up right now, right. and I've never felt more alive. Yeah. But I can tell you, in my office, and I'm not just saying this, my office, listen, we have your music on the big screen, nonstop, mm -hmm. praise and worship. Yeah. And it's from some of your earlier events where people thought you were crazy. You're going right. into Portland. Right. You're rushing yeah. into these lockdown yeah. zones. And it's in my music. All the, it's in, in, Your music, I, I, and God just told me, I, I mean this, I was a DJ, Sean, and God was working on me going, you got to change your playlist. And I'm wow. going, no Prince. No, Michael Jackson. No, because I'm not kidding. I was at my office was constantly. I was a DJ. Right. That was what I did for years. Right. 
And so I, that was an act of obedience shift in my music. Yeah. And then God was like, don't celebrate paganism. Right. And I'm thinking, who in my office is a pagan? I look around, I got pictures and posters of Jay-Z and some of the secular people I cheered for as a DJ. And I'm like, I got to take down those people. And God was working on me going, you got to tear down those idols. Right. And so all I know, it's been for me a time of conviction. Right. And a time of just recalibrating. And right. I, I, I think if it wasn't for God's mercy yeah. in this great time of, of struggle, right. people like me would have never been here with you. Yeah. So I'm actually thankful yeah. that God allowed this to happen. Yeah. And I feel like we're on the verge of experiencing this revival that you've been praying for since you were yeah. 16. Yeah. I'm seeing it. Yeah. It's happening. Well, yeah. And, and, and that's, that's kind of what I wanted to ask you. I mean, I... I share with people all the time, you know, my perspective of going to 170 cities now across yeah. America, super, super blue cities, super yeah. red cities, yeah. um, places where we're welcomed. I mean, starting now, we're more welcomed. Yeah. Uh, places where we were despised. Yeah. Um, what are you seeing? I mean, you, you're, you're hosting these in all these different pockets. Yeah. Now, I do want to say, before you answer that, I feel like the conservative movement is actually a real mission field. Yeah. And I feel like that there are people that have lost hope in, in, in political ideologies, have Correct. lost hope in politicians, yeah. have lost. And so that's one of the things I love about your events is the altar call time, yeah. the time to cry out to God, the time for people to, to, yeah. to, to repent, the time for people to get their heart right. You always promote the preaching of the gospel. You let that's us what worship. it's all about. I love that. Yeah. But what are you seeing right now in all of these different places? Like, what is the, you know, the we're here in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. Before we we're in upstate New York. Yeah. Before that, you were, you know, in, in Virginia. That's before General that Flynn's in, doing. He always said, he, he'll identify the most uh, uh, dry spiritually places, right. and he wants to go there. Right. And I'm going, okay, that's where we're going. <laughs> I mean, he's the one who chooses. I don't choose him. He calls me and says, we need to take this to Washington. I was like, Washington? Why? Goes, they need it. I'm sure he'll say L.A. one of these times. Yeah. I mean, he's just going to do That's how yeah, he is. You're yeah, like that, too. Yeah. So, you know, but it's at the last event we had uh, just over 4,000 people under the tent in Batavia. Right. And we had 4,000 baptisms. Wow. Or sorry, 4,000 4, attendees, but 400 baptisms. So 400. Wow. So you're talking 10% baptized. Wow. I mean, that's that's big. some of the pastors are telling me, they go, I, we don't see this many baptisms in a year. Right. And I just see people as they look for the truth. They go, why would people do this? Like, why would Klaus Schwab get together and write a book called The Great Reset? Like, why would he write a book called COVID-19, The Great Reset? Why? And you go, well, because he's a Luciferian, you know? Right. Or why would these patents exist for this technology? Well, because it's uh, Satanism. Or why would there be Executive Order 14067? Executive Order 14067 is for a cryptocurrency, like a programmable currency, that Biden has signed that's supposed to go into effect on December 13th that makes it where you literally can have your money turned off like your social media can be turned off. So I'm just saying right now, I, I'm seeing people say, why would they do that? And you go, because they're evil. Or why would Disney, with one of their, Disney is as a parent company for FX, and FX right now put together a new show called Little Demon. Yeah, I saw that. And you that. say, well, why are they putting together a show about the Antichrist? Right. It's because they're Luciferians. So when you discover evil, which is what our event does, we expose the corruption, we expose right. the evil, right. and then you have to pick a side. You have to pick a side, Team Jesus or Team Satan. And if you choose Team Jesus, you have to repent. When I say you, who am I talking to? Me. And I can tell you, I watched your wife uh, talk about your new documentary in yeah. Tulsa. Yeah. And when, as she was sharing stories about how you guys as a couple have worked through this together, and it was all very encouraging about your marriage. Yeah. She was sharing some uncomfortable spots where she was like, for a moment, I kind of wanted Sean to stop. And I was kind of cringing, but I'm kind of like, I can relate to that. <laughs> you know? So, I mean, my wife and I have never been closer. Um, my family's never been closer. Right. And I, I'm just, I'm seeing revival. A nine out of 10 people are no longer watching CNN. Right. I mean, I'm just, I am seeing encouraging things. So if people want discouragement, I don't have, I'm encouraged. Right. Uh, I see people spontaneously laughing when you're doing praise and worship, yeah. which makes no sense to me. I watch people, and they're laughing, and I'm like, I asked this guy, what are you laughing at? He's like, he's literally singing in the middle of chaos. 
Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm encouraged right now, but yeah. I, I just think if you put your hope in the Federal Reserve or the Republican Party or anything outside of God, right. Right. that's going to be shaken. Right. But I know uh, Tucker Carlson, who I know that that's a man who seeks the truth. Right. And as he seeks the truth, as you mentioned earlier, you know, if we put hope in certain pastors, we can't put our hope there. Right. And if Tucker's watching this, I'd say this to you, Tucker. I, I, I got together with a good friend of mine. He's a rabbi. He's a Hebrew scholar. And I said, why isn't the word hero in Hebrew? And he said, because you shouldn't put your faith in anybody except for God, including your pastors. Because pastors are, you know, they're not perfect either. They're just trying to point you to the cross. Right. So I just think we're, we're all discovering um, the ultimate source of truth right now. Right. And we're in the Bible more than ever. I'm not sure what percentage of time I now read the Bible, but I used to never read it. Yeah. And now it's like a daily thing. Wow. Yeah. What 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 is your like response? Of course you're you're getting pushback and heat from you know, the same kind of people that we get it from. Yeah. Hit pieces, all these different things. People saying you're weaponizing for political gain, yeah. you're using the you're you're using the Bible to justify this oh, far yeah. right ideology, all that kind of stuff. How do you separate that stuff from people's minds? Like what would you tell a person yeah. that maybe uh carries a more liberal bent they they grew up they they're, haven't been around yeah. this awakening stuff that you're doing yeah. and they feel like these things are intrinsically tied together in their mind what would your answer well i would say that satan if you read the book of genesis satan started off confusing adam and eve about what was right and right. wrong he's the author of confusion and i see right. a lot of people now who are con they're kind of confused about what gender they are right they're confused about uh you know election integrity Right. They're confused about medical uh, freedom. And there's a confusion. Like, do you have the right to go visit your grandma in the hospital because you might spread a virus to her? Do you have the right to question election integrity? Do you have the right? So I think if we just, if we throw out Republicans, because the, the truth is very embarrassing for Republicans. And uh, I don't know Josh Hawley, but I know you do. Josh is one of the few consistent conservative voices out there who, in my opinion, represents the, the, the new breed of Republicans right. that just unapologetically, what he said the other day about the Bible and Christianity, I mean, Josh Hawley's fighting for America and, and for Christianity in America. And so when you start to say, who is persecuting religious freedom? And you start to get down to that, you start to realize, okay, wow, even if I'm not a Christian, this other party, the, the far left, they don't even want us to have the right to choose. Yeah. And Jesus gave us the freedom. God gave us the freedom. God gave Adam and Eve the freedom to choose. So I would just say, if you believe in free will, if you believe in the freedom to choose, if you believe in the freedom of life, if you believe in the freedom of medical freedom, if you believe in not aborting a child post-birth, I mean, what? Right. I mean, right. what? then you really need to vote for candidates yeah. that are in favor of the life of the unborn, yeah. that, that support freedom. And then if you don't you know, one, accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Uh, I'd strongly encourage you to do it, but at least on the conservative side, you can choose. Right. And I was just talking to Rashid Batard. Have you met Rashid yet, Dr. Rashid? He's a doctor who's uh, one, of our, our, one of our doctors who, who speaks at these events, and he's a Muslim. And every time I see him, I try to convert him. I mean, literally every single time I see him, I just try to convert him again. I got rejected. We'll come back again. And he and I talk every week. But the fun thing about our relationship is that he doesn't accept Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior yet, but... I could bring it up to him, and with a smile, he can say, oh, I don't think it's the right choice for me. But we're not, like, forcing it. I'm not trying right. to say he's irrelevant and he's not allowed to speak about medical truth at our right. conference. Right. And I think that's the beautiful thing about conservatism. Right. Well, and, and I think what's this, this so sad and sobering reality is, is that, you know, you have something like this Marriage, marriage Equality Act or whatever oh, it is that they want to pass, and they have so much Republican support yeah. for dismantling. I mean, and, and in my mind... If you're not conserving the family, if you're not conserving the baseline of what God said, this is, this is what marriage looks like, this is family. If you're not conserving that, you're not conserving anything. Right. And I think that a lot of that is even being exposed right now. And I mean, I ran as a Republican candidate, right? Yeah. I didn't have a lot of choice in California. Right. However, to me, I'm, I'm team Jesus. Right. You know, and I love, you know, I'm a, I'm a Christian, I'm a conservative, and then a Republican in that order. And I feel like if you, and I don't know President Trump, you've had a chance to meet him. I haven't met yeah. him. I've obviously become very good friends with now Eric and met Don yeah. Jr. I'm starting to hear, if you listen to President Trump's speeches, 
I'm starting to hear more of a Team Jesus out of him. Right. If you just go through the transcripts and see how often he references God, I mean, this man is standing for God and religious freedom. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if that Kim Clement prophecy doesn't come to pass. Where Remind President everybody Trump, what that well, is. There's a, if you just go to uh, uh, rumble.com tonight yeah. and type in Trump prophecies, Kim Clement. Kim Clement prophesied that Donald J. Trump, he said, he said Trump would become a trumpet. He said he would be a president for two terms, and he said he would be filled with the Holy Spirit, and then he would come back. And I haven't, and I, I don't know President Trump, so I'm not judging. All I'm saying is I wouldn't be surprised if he is with you and people like you, and he asks for the Holy Spirit to fill him. And I'm not prophesying that. I just do believe the Kim Clement prophecy is true. And I wouldn't be surprised if he asks the Holy Spirit to fill him. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if he comes up there for part two and he does press conferences where he rebukes Luciferian reporters in the name of Jesus. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, if you, if you watch <laughs> if you watch his speeches now, he, he brings the name of God up often. I wouldn't be surprised if you start hearing him yeah. say, in Jesus' name. I mean, he is that close. I'm just seeing a revival right now. I'm seeing it with the Trump family. I can speak to Eric's heart and soul. He loves this country. Right. And Eric, Eric loves God. Yeah. We've had some very, very great conversations about yeah. God. And I'm just telling you, I, I'm, I'm sensing it happening. right. I can feel it. There's a shift that's occurring. Right. I just want to leave people today with a sense of hope yeah. because Jesus is king. We are going to win this thing. God hasn't forgotten yeah. about us. And I am telling you, I'm seeing a revival in the Trump family. I'm seeing a revival in the, in the conservative movement. I'm seeing a revival, and I know we're going to turn this thing around. Amen. Well, that's awesome. Well, I got to go lead worship. Hey, but this is awesome. Thank you so much for sharing this, Clay. And, you know, I'm really, really excited. Any time that we're welcomed to come and bring the gifting of who we are and be released, I just feel at home. And so I thank you for allowing us to do that. If you get tonight, injured tonight, I do play a mean cowbell. <laughs> I'm phenomenal. <laughs> All right. Cut. No. All right. God bless you guys. Thank you, Clay. Where can they find out more about this? Oh, uh, time to freeamerica.com. Time to freeamerica.com. And real quick, the, the mainstream media likes to say that our events are sold out when they're not. It's right. a way to discourage people. And they also say you can't afford it. You can name your price. Time to freeamerica.com. Pay whatever you want to pay. We want to serve you. We want to share with you the truth. And uh, we have baptisms at each and every event. Again, time to freeamerica.com. Time to freeamerica.com. Check it out. God bless. <laughs>